Welcome back, everyone. I'm Zell, and I'm bumping into everything, and I am the reason that we're late tonight. I clicked the wrong thing setting up the Hangout, but we are live now with Late Night with Zell and Staza, and tonight we're going to be doing uh, just pretty much whatever you guys want to do. We've got a couple of things that we're going to talk about that are kind of neat. We've got uh, going to give you kind of a preview list of a couple of the prize packs that we have gathered up and will be putting out to you guys for this uh, giveaway that has taken way too long to get together. But guys, believe me, whenever you hear, we're going to give you, I think, a middle prize pack and one of yeah. the lower prize packs. And once you hear what we're giving away, I think it's going to be worth the wait. I think it's going to be worth doing the survey because we didn't even realize how much stuff we had. Did we, Staz? No, not like not even close because, you know, stuff starts to get piled up in a box, you know, waiting for different sponsors and stuff and never really looked at it. And when we put it on paper, I think even though we both knew what was coming, I was uh, kind of flabbergasted. Heck, yeah. It was like, whoa, <laughs> what the heck is going on? Whenever I made that list up for you of the stuff that I have here, I was like, um, everything on that list is sponsored stuff and that's just freaking crazy that these sponsors trust us yahoos enough to do this stuff you know so cool yeah it is and it just it shows how how awesome our community is it truly does i mean oh it really does i mean we've got both of the premier knife sharpener companies playing along and even making their stuff even so that if you win the Wicked Edge or you win the uh, uh, KME, either one, you're getting basically the same ability to sharpen the knife, which means Wicked Edge put a lot more money into their package to make sure it was the same as KME's, which is super cool. Uh, anyhow, we should probably talk knives. we got seven guys on. Anybody, how you doing, everybody? You know, say hi, how you doing? Let us know who's in here because we can't see anything till you start talking in the chat. Yeah, I got some. I got what's up, Woodland Tactical, A Ray, Jared Connor, oh. Blade Centered. What's up, guys? Love seeing all these these people that we see on, you know, most of our chats. Yeah, and that that just made me realize I've got the wrong chat up. I've got the chat for the one where we goofed. Hey, don't worry. I did the same exact thing. <laughs> so I got to bring up the other chat. I was like, come on. I know these guys are <laughs> saying hi and all this stuff, and nobody's there. What the heck? Yeah. What's, uh, what's up, gents? Um, all right. Oh, is that, what is, is that a Weeha, um set? That's a massive uh, torch set you got there. Yes, that is my pride and joy knife building knife maintenance set. I mean, this one's kind of been pieced out. People have borrowed things for various different stuff, but uh, I've got a copper or brass. You guys tell me. I can't ever keep track of the patina. That's copper. Uh, okay, so I've got the copper one and got a titanium one of those Scout Leather Company drivers. Got all the bits from T8 to T or T6 to T15 in this one. And this little ABN bit holder is super cool. It's like seven bucks. It's magnetic and it holds however many bits that is, more than enough for doing knife stuff. Oh, it's magnetic? Yeah, it's magnetic. It holds the bits down in there. <coughs> it's not like strong magnetic, just enough to hold them in there where, you know, I can take that out and turn it upside down and. Nothing yeah, falls out. You don't want it too strong. One. You don't want it too strong. Then you'd be trying to pry them out of there. Right. But uh, I picked those up, and the reason they're cool is because that fits right down in there. Yeah. That's and super holds cool. itself up if yeah. you drop it in the hole right. What's up, Kiefer? Um, <clears throat> look, I will show if I can get it underneath this screen. You know that um, uh, Nick Shabazz get. Uh, Gave me the idea and told me what to get. It's that Kaizen foam. Yeah, I've got a roll or not a roll a sheet of that upstairs. Oh, I, I ordered some thick one. I don't know if y'all can see this, but look, that's my thing I made, the tray. I got my driver, some um, Loctite, two X-Acto knives. Here's all my extra spare bits right here. 
um, a Benchmade thing, some of that Vibratite, uh, my three lubes in the back, my prod bars. There's both of my drivers. I got a, I got four different. You got to have multiple drivers. I mean, you do a oh, lot yeah. of maintenance. You you, you got to have. And, and to me, whenever I'm when I'm set up like this, and that organization, it it, it relieves so much stress and makes you know the knife maintenance a lot lot more enjoyable. Instead of, you know, yeah. trying to find, looking through drawers, trying to find stuff. So I, after I did that, it, it, oh man, literally a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I know it sounds silly, but it just makes it oh, so no, it much doesn't. easier. You know, that was my biggest thing. I had made a little stand for a couple of other things. In fact, I even had a little guy that had uh, bit sizes somewhere in one of the videos for making stands for these things. But this little thing at seven bucks was like the stuff, man. Where are you get then that I can hold it. it was on Amazon. Uh, okay, I, need I think one of them. if you, I think if you go to my video uh, where I outline all this stuff, and I've got one, uh, it's got a link to this one. You know whether it's still good or not, who knows? But, but yeah, I've got everything in here. I've got the little Strider tools in here. Uh, in fact, I've got a hinderer tool on the desk down here. Uh, this is a hinderer tool. Um, you seen one like like that? No, it's, it's nice. It's oh, right in there. Wait, let me see it. Oh, you made that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I made one too. I took, I made one out of a. Um, first, I started with a penny, and then I went to a thicker a washer. That radius, you know, works fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got a lot a lot of new people real quick. Let's just say hey to everybody. Uh, Jared, Connor. What's up, A-Ray? Manny. Uh, what's up, Rick? Uh, let's see. And I'm reading over some of our comments. Thanks, A-Ray. Uh, I, I was going for different. He was talking about my um, Spidey yeah, Chef. Yeah, Spidey Chef. Yeah, yeah. We'll get, let me get over there to you on that. Show that thing off. And uh, while you're showing it off, I'll talk for a minute uh, about these drivers. <laughs> I, I'm well aware that the Scout Leather Company drivers have certain people that like them and certain people that don't. Here's the thing with them. They are the cheapest of the professional drivers. And I'm calling them professional drivers because they got some weight to them. They feel good in hand and they're precision and they don't break. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the important part is that last one. They don't break, nope. and at sixty dollars a piece, yes, they are expensive. But if you are using uh, quarter inch bits all the time, it's my opinion that they're the best deal out there. And do not get the titanium one. I made a mistake and picked up a titanium one whenever it was on sale. Get the brass and copper. They've got a better weight and a better. I was about deal. to say it, it's probably more balanced, huh? Yeah, it feels a lot better. And don't, if you use them a lot, don't be scared away from the price and try to find their wabi sabi ones whenever they've got them, which means they got a little blemish on them somewhere. Because just use the heck out of those things. Yeah. They are, once you have one in hand and you actually use it, you'll forget <laughs> about the 40 to 60 bucks you gave for it because it is just so nice. Now, one question I have, and I haven't ever, I mean, they're really sturdy. Um, I've, uh, you know, doing, doing work here and there, trying to uh, rush, rush a, a maintenance job. I mean, rush a, 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 you know, knife maintenance job. I've dropped this off the table several times. Do you have any idea if these, the tops, the bearings are press fit on there? How, can you, I wonder if you can put a new one on there if you break that i mean like i said uh, I, I bet I, you can I dropped mine a few times and it, it still spins good and everything it looks like that top thing might just be a uh it's probably press fit in there yeah i'm pretty sure it's just press fit i haven't worried about it too much because i'm not uh people talk about fidget factor in these things these are not fidgeters for me no they're <laughs> tools and i was about to say why well, I, I, I that's the last thing i'm thinking about when i'm doing maintenance no, on my knife i don't don't know if we can see it or not on the camera but mine has some marks in the knurling and some 
where it's dropped off the desk or onto the concrete or whatever and up in the shop and got beat up. Now the titanium, it still looks good, but, uh, yeah, I just, they're user drivers and yeah, they're a bit expensive, but, uh, I just kind of wanted to put that out. And as far as Kiefer and what size spanner for a Medford, I have never taken apart a part of Medford. And here is exactly why, because they are with the, with Buck included here, those two knife companies are the two knife companies that I absolutely 100% trust to take care of that knife if I have a problem. And if I have a problem with my Medford or my Buck, I'm going to put it in a box and I'm going to send it to them because they <laughs> will fix that thing and fix it right. So I know everybody wants to take them <clears throat> apart, but I, I, it's hard to, to say it, but I do... Uh, kind of, sort of agree with what Greg says about these knives, and it it's hard to understand it until you put one in your hand and you you mess with it some. I mean, I don't know. What do you think, Staza? Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, I, I I definitely I definitely think that as far as taking them apart. If uh, if you don't feel com if you don't feel confident, don't don't mess with it. That goes with any knife, though. Well, yeah, because every knife company's got a pretty good warranty about this stuff. And but the thing is, Greg is gonna if you haven't taken this apart and messed with it, Greg is gonna bend over backwards to fix it, whatever it is. Uh, now, if you have done a whole bunch of messing with it, he's gonna you know make a YouTube video about you. So you know. <laughs> Pick your poison, I suppose. Yeah. And it looks like my uh, my connection's kind of poor. So uh, if you start getting scratchy or something, I'll just let me know. Um, a few people had a few questions on here. Uh, my Spidey Chef, yeah, it's, it's anodized. And, yeah, I was kind of going for somewhat of a um, – I, I like that, that rustic patina look. And I did it um, like a purplish bronze with uh, gold over the top. And uh, it, it came out way better than I expected. It, it, it came out a lot different than I expected because it's a blasted frame, and that's always going to change up your color. So um, can, you, can you see what I'm uh, doing, Zell? Yeah. Okay. Cause, yeah, you're up. Okay, I just popped back up. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Yeah. Remember whatever you're watching there, I'm ahead of you. Yeah. So that's, you why, that's, why I asked. that's why I was asking. What's up? What's up, Brian? Uh, uh, who else? what's up, Doug, Dylan? What's up, Dylan? Yeah. Well, Slicey, you really shouldn't be, uh, wearing unitards even at, you know, a Halloween party. You know, if it's footy pajamas, that's one thing. But a, a unitard, that's something completely different, and we're not going to talk about that any further. And you're right about Benchmade. They are the Cadillac of production knife customer service. That is absolutely right. And how you doing, Dylan? Uh, and I, yeah, like I said, Rick, that's what I had to say. Bob Snyder, are you talking about this knife and this knife? If those are the two you're talking about, this knife is the Roxy 4. This is one of the production prototypes. There's only four of them in the world right now. And there will be some uh, minor changes to this one, but this is pretty much what you're going to get in production. Uh, they will be released Blade Show next year, Blade Show Atlanta next year. Uh, the one beside it is one that I don't know if we will ever see a release on. It is the Master Chief Mark IV, if I remember right. We've got like five different versions of the Master Chief. Uh, so I get, I lose track of which one's which. But uh, we preferred the smaller version, which I have a production prototype of over here. And uh, it's, as you can yeah. see, it's uh, like very that. much the same knife. Uh, the this one just has about a half inch longer blade, and it's a big, 
it's a taller knife because of the way the pivot works. Now this one's got a little bit more complicated to mill out pivot, so it could be a little smaller. Is, but, is, uh, is my dog, y'all can hear, you can hear my dog rumbling? Yeah, he's not too bad yet though. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll make I'm it. just going to let you know, just like last time, if he, if he starts his nonsense, I'm just going to mute it until he stops. I don't, I don't want to blow anybody's eardrums out there. Yeah, Dylan, uh, you got you say it's point zero three one. If you run down to your local Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, they will have a pair of digital calipers that are good enough for what you're trying to do for like twenty bucks, and mm -hmm. uh, get you a pair of those so it's easy to read. And you need to let uh, the company know that whenever they make the knife, that the behind the edge thickness needs to be are right at 20 thousandths or so. Uh, and I know the guys that don't know, this is a con continued conversation from last night. We were talking about edge thicknesses and grinds with Dylan. He's got a, a design coming out with Artisan Cutlery, the Ar Arshio, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Dylan. I'm sorry. <coughs> but, uh, and we were talking about some of the technical aspects last night in our IG stream. And uh, one of those was behind the edge thickness. And Slicey, we are working our butts off to get the Todd Knife and Knife Tool Knives to you. They are, you know, I can tell you, two of them are in production right now. So we're getting closer. You know, this guy right here just went into production. I'm not going to spill all the beans on it, but I will say that uh, it's quite possible that if you are a left-hander <laughs> out there, that uh, you'll want to be watching Todd Knife and Tool and Zelrick 42, our Instagrams and stuff, because there may be some little beautiful nuggets for you guys. <laughs> nuggets, nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> and, man, what do you got on that desk over there, Stazzy? You've been, you've hey, been, I, you've been I got, putting I new got, stuff down. I got bored, so I, I actually, in a second, I got a, a pretty neat knife I want to show off that I, I just got in today. And now it's what's, neat. What's up? What's that one up there by the uh, quiet carry knife? This? Yeah. That's the iron pup. Oh, um, okay. The Berg's, Berg's blade mini iron pup. Okay. Yeah, that thing's pretty neat. Maybe by, guess... by we. Oh, yeah, but... I don't see everything that we make. Now, this it's this is a really really uh, awesome knife. It's it's got that custom look and feel to it. Only thing that I would have liked to see different is a thinner grind. It's it's pretty thick. Um, it's not the best slicer, and it could probably go. I could probably you know put a nice good edge on it, uh, but. Everything else is just so perfect. The detents dialed in perfect. That perfect size that I like. I mean, anybody with bigger than medium sized hands, it'd be too small for you, especially when there's no lanyard uh, attachment on it. That's always but, a good thing. You, you know, whenever we design knives, and there's going to be people <laughs> upset, and I'm going to ru run back to my camera for a minute here. People yeah, upset because the uh, malware has no lanyard attachment anywhere. There wasn't any room for it. I mean, it is just so thin at the end, but I don't use lanyards. Um, me neither. So. Now, especially not on, like, and I think we talked about this the other night, especially when it, like, you know, I understand on a knife, like, where, it, let's see if I have one in front of me. Yeah, while uh, you're looking there, I need to answer a question here for yeah, from A Ray. Uh, <laughs> a Ray, this knife. My guess is somewhere 250, 300 ish. That is my guess. It, they may surprise me. That price is up to Best Tech. It is not up to me and Seth. All we know is it's going to be in their premium category. Uh, same thing here. Uh, and we don't know what the finishes are going to be on this Roxy 4. So. Uh, depending on how they do the finishes, it could run up a little higher or it can, could run a little cheaper. I don't know, but probably 250 to 300 The Roxy that I don't have a version of on the desk right now that's coming out in December from uh, Wii, which is basically the, the tactical box cutter from uh, Wii that's the smaller version of this knife. 
much smaller version, uh, two and five eighths inch blade. I'm guessing that that one's going to be around that 250 to 300 mark too. <laughs> uh, but I can't guarantee any of those prices because uh, I haven't been, I'm not part of who decides what the price is going to be besides putting a floor on them. That's all we get to do. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a beauty right there. That, that and the little guy are definitely a set that I'll be getting no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Same here, Jared. Yeah. Lanyards. I have, like I said, I, I, I would definitely not be sad if, uh, all lanyards went away. The only time I ever see use for a lanyard is when you don't have that full four finger grip and, you know, you can slide your pinky into it to get a better grip. That's the only time I really see a use for it. Other than that, it's pocket jewelry most of the time. And, you know, for those who like it, hey, that's cool. Yeah, that's their thing. I just you know, wish I've... more would do the hidden lanyard post, you know? Yeah, I've got a couple of really small uh, man bug uh ladybug and i thought i had them up here on the desk but i don't uh can i uh are you, are you about to show something because if not i want to show a, a cool cool uh knife oh you're up scale. man you're all up. right I, I got this in this is a new quiet carry dang it i can't even let me see if the name's on here yet yeah, no quiet carry it name's not on here and it's not on the box i don't think i always forget but uh check this scale out y'all it almost looks like a burl Look at that, Zell. Doesn't that look like uh, like a Buckeye Burl or something? Yeah, I I'm a little upset with all you guys showing those all off. Mine got mailed out last week, and it hasn't arrived yet. What's that? That knife. This one? Yeah. Oh. Look, it just came in today, so yours will probably come in soon. Uh, did, did you get the scale, or did you get the black G10? I don't remember. But, man, look, this is an acrylic scale. And my neighbor is a uh, wood turner. He does duck calls and stuff. And I had this up against one of his dyed Buckeye burls. Mm -hmm. and man, like it, it looked identical. I mean, now you can feel it. It doesn't, it's cool because it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like a smooth G10 feeling. It, it doesn't have that plasticky feel or anything. Um, and I'm liking the knife a good bit. The only, only negative that I've, I've, found right off the back is this pocket clip yeah I'm not see how digging. high they put it right there yeah and look look at that right yeah, there is not it's, much it's room a major hot spot whenever you when you're bearing down it i mean you look i can show you it's just sitting yep. right there so what i'm gonna do is is i'm gonna ditch the pocket clip because it's a thin knife overall as it is and it's decent decent weight i'm gonna ditch that pocket clip and uh Put it in my battle battleground leather slip sheath. Yeah, I'll probably make a pocket floater out of it whenever it arrives. Mm, yeah, it's definitely me. if it, you know if, if that kind of stuff doesn't bother you, it's definitely um, okay to do that. Um, and uh, another thing, this N six ninety blade is a nice nice slicer. It came stupid sharp, and this jimping is 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 almost in that borderline. You know aggressive but i i don't think you know like you can rub your hands on it, it's not tearing me up but it locks that thumb in so well it's pitiful and um just like all the other quiet carries i've owned the smoothness just like this the strand smoothness is is great on the strand especially after broken they know how to do their phosphor bronze washers really good and this is no exception Oh, that's excellent. Seth's bringing something up here. I'm going to run the camera over the other side. And yes, this right here, the Roxy 4, as per Greg Medford, just like <laughs> Seth said, Seth's my brother, the, the other half of Todd Knife and Tool, or together we're Todd Knife and Tool. And he called this thing the Viking Knife every time he looked at it. So I've been calling it Siaxi. Which so, one? The Roxy 4. <laughs> the Viking Knife. Well, yeah, that was every time we talked to Greg at Blade Show West, he was like, hey, where's that Viking knife? Oh, like the CX or whatever it's called? The Viking yeah. CX? CX so, Sax? So I've been calling it Saxy or Siaxy. Let me check out our, uh, 
our our feed going on the Viking Knife per Greg Mavert, uh, Yeah, and Dylan, buddy. Uh, you know, I'd be watching all of that stuff, but the Rangers aren't in it, the Cards aren't in it, and the Royals aren't in it. So, what's the point? Sharpsville, Bill. Hey, like I said, teach their own. I just don't have a use for it. Do you um do you use them for you know um more than just the looks? Because I do know a couple of my buddies use them because they like to let the knife sit down their pocket and they like to just grab that lanyard and pull it straight out. And I understand that. It's just you know just not not for me that way. Uh. <laughs> I hear you, Dylan. I'm watching y'all. Okay. We appreciate that, man. Uh, it's a little easier. Yeah, that's what he's saying. And, you know, I, I hear that. I understand that. Uh, I have developed the method, <clears throat> and I think that's what most people do, of putting my thumb behind the knife and yeah. kind of wrapping my – and pulling the knife out. And that's one reason I'm not the hugest fan – of super deep carry pocket clips. Yes. Yeah, I want yeah. to have something to hold on to. And that's why uh, Seth can tell you most, well, all of our Todd knife and tool knives do not have super deep carry pocket clips. We've got, uh, you, well, this one's a little more than most, but you probably got right around a half an inch or a little under on most of the knives sticking up. We try to keep it where it's something that's not going to get in your way or get caught on <laughs> things. But, uh, don't care much for the the super deep carry because you don't have anything to grab onto. Well, I I've gotten uh, used to like say for instance my here it is right here my um, DPX gear has it's got yeah, hang on there you go the has as you can see it's got you know all the way up there and whenever I'm when I'm pulling a knife like this out of my pocket I usually grab the side of it put my finger and then do that back thing like you're saying and pull it on out. Um, the ones to me that are just pure perfection is where you have this and they have it set up like on a post or something right here. So no matter what, even if you put in pressure on here, you're only putting pressure on the post. You're not putting it on the extension of the clip. That's a genius, genius idea. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Buck does that on some of their knives, which, you know, they're not. And, uh, yes, let me see, A-Ray, if I can get this thing in the light where you can see it good. And I've been carrying it a lot, so it's got some scratches on it. Uh, quite a few scratches, actually. But, yes, that is, it was anodized dark bronze. And then they took a map torch <laughs> with a pencil tip and flamed it uh, somewhat in the same way. Not like as a strider evenly. Almost but kind of like a Strider does, they use a map torch with a pen tip. Yeah, they and, use uh, the micro pen. Yeah, to do theirs, and that's pretty much what we did here is just a random pattern instead of the, uh, you know, the really tight pattern that Mick does. And I don't know if it was on the stream or not, but somebody, uh, or might have been an a email I got, somebody had asked me if I knew how to do that with a torch, and something you need to know, you need a you need to use the oxygen acetylene torch. It's got to get hot enough, fast enough to make those fine, precise uh, marks. Because there's a few videos. I think even we might have shown them doing it. Uh, and I've seen a couple other videos. They turn they turn that oxygen acetylene torch up with a micro tip on it, and literally, basically, they start it. And once it starts turning colors, they just draw the line across and then go back and forth. I mean, it yeah, and takes seconds. Like this, same thing here. Uh, Mick anodized, may have heat anodized, he may have baked it, but he probably electrically anodized the scale first and then went over it with the flame. Yeah. Yeah, I would think he, he went with that, that, that um, maybe seven volts or whatever to get it that dark and yeah. then came, came back. But I will tell you, though, too, um, I've done – I've done some oxygen acetylene and with those, those darker blues he's getting that, that heat, whenever I did it, it, it'll turn whatever's not in those stripes. It turns it all the same solid color underneath. 
Well, but, and maybe that's what he does. But he's he he's gotten his think about it. He's been doing that pattern ever since he started the company. Now it's gotten tighter and tighter. He used to do that circle swirl pattern back mm-hmm. in the day when he first started. So he's been able to perfect it over the last what however many years he's been open. Right. And Rick, I don't know if it's gonna be flamed. Whenever we spoke to them about finishes, we did since they did these, they did Three of them flame. They had a, a blue with flame. They had a dark, almost uh, purpley blue with flames. And then they had this one. And whenever we talked to them, we asked that they do the blue and we asked that they do this one uh, in the production version. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, there's always a chance that they may do them and they may be a limited edition section for you know, only a certain number of knives. Who knows? We'll just have to uh, wait. And Woodland Tactical, the malware is coming your way soon. It is in production, my friend. And uh, there's Tony Meter liking pictures on Instagram. Why isn't he in here on the YouTube stream? We need our encyclopedia. But yeah, the malware is coming at you. It is in production right now and uh, should be out sometime in the next, uh, I'm going to say several weeks. Anyhow, there you are. There's Nick. What else you got over there is cool, Nick. Hey, you know, we talked about these the other night, but what type of uh, little, oh, the one in the bottom right, the razor blade deal, what oh, the heck is that thing? This is, uh, I, I, me and me and Brian both saw um, Best Damn EDC on YouTube, and I already had a few of these. So once I, once I had seen this on his thing, it looks so interesting. It's called the Guild Tech Ruck. And uh, when I got mine, I was like, man, mine's not working that good because Brian's was, was real fluid. And the guy from Best Damn EDCs, his was real fluid. And I was all bummed out. I, I even messaged the owner. What it was is that the blade that I was using, um, I forgot. I was like, I think I was using one of the Lennox Golds. And for some reason, that blade was flexing when I was pushing down because to actuate, you press down. It's got this little uh, torsion spring right here, mm-hmm. kind of like a, a, a detent, uh, you know, frame lock, whatever. And then behind on this area right here, there's two little nubs on each side. Uh, so when you push this, when you push it down and out, it locks into one of those little uh, holes onto the top of the razor knife and into the blade. And then no rattle whatsoever. You can go out. Think, yeah, you can go up. I just went too far, but I'll give, better give you a better picture. See, this is pushing on the back of the blade. Yeah. If you want to take it, just take it out like this. When you go to load it back, it's got a track that you put it in, so you're not hitting, you're not hitting that um, that nub. And then you just push this back again. Slide the blade. I'm trying to do this behind the camera, so of course I ain't gonna do it. Push that, and it's loaded back. Push it back down. So if anybody, if you decide to get one, this is a hard anodized aluminum version, super, super duper light. I want the titanium version, of course. Very thin. Um, the only thing about this one that I don't love is when it's in that when that open position, that little thing right there, that little choil. That's not safe. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much what I do is, though, is I'm, I'm cutting like this. Yeah. You know, doing my cutting. But the thing I like over this one, over my rut, my Rexford rut, and my big idea design one is the one-hand operation. That That is the best thing. If this thing had a, um, a pry bar, like right here, you know, like a pry slash flathead, right. this thing would definitely be my number one it's the number one as far as ease of use it has your little cap lifter right there too but 30 bucks too i think really cheap how brian aren't these 30 keep talking man i'm gonna grab the uh roxy see if i can find it anyhow and uh i'm gonna be doing i you know i collect stuff like this you know like uh tools and cutters i think i have like for i think i have like 10 like tools kind of like this and i think i'm gonna do a video on them pretty soon I'm not sure if, if if that's something everybody want to see 
I'll probably do that. I, I, like I said, I want the titanium version of this. And I just also, I don't know if anybody else picked one up, but it's a uh, titanium pry bar that had a Kickstarter project. Um, I can't recall the name of the company, but it has the um, the ratchet little thing in there. It's got a, like a little titanium or stainless bar that comes up and it only allows it to, to bend one way. It's pretty cool. It'll allow you to put a standard driver in there. And they're not that expensive for what it is. Let's see. All How right. How does the... The tie, I think the tie version, I think it's like 70 or oh, 85 for the tie version. They gave me a tie one because the guy's brother that did his Sarah coat became alerted to it. Sounds like he has someone. Yeah, um, I I don't know if he found, I know the Sarah, his Sarah coat guy, um, he was having tons of problems with him and he's no longer offering or last when I bought mine, he wasn't offering the Cerakote versions anymore. And he was looking for a new guy. These are hard, uh, anodized. So, I mean, I'm fine with this and I wanted to check out this version and until I decide whether I want the tie version or not. But okay. man, Rick, that's crazy. Is he, all, did, was he all right? Uh, Rick was saying that his, no, I see it. Yeah, that's crazy. But um, like I was just telling him there, the guy was telling me that whoever was doing a Cerakote for him was screwing him over and stuff. And uh, ones that got messed up, he said it wasn't his his problem. I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't know who who he was getting it done, but I don't want work done by him. Yeah, no kidding. Well, people were asking about, I said Roxy, I meant Risty. And there is our Risty. Uh, oh, that's, uh, God, that's a beauty. Hey, why, uh, why are you talking about that? I need to grab something real quick, okay? Yeah, okay. And, you know, I figured while we're here, we'll just go through some of the stuff I've got on the table, this Todd Knife and Tool, because it seems to be a topic every time we do one of these, and which is great. We love to hear it, that you guys are interested in these things. But we have uh, the Roxy 4. We've talked about that one some already. Uh, this is a Master Chief Mark 4, I believe. These are 3 or 4. I can't remember exactly. Uh, Seth could probably tell us if he's still in there. But uh, uh, we decided, though, on the smaller Master Chief, this is the Risty. We don't have a production deal on this one yet, but... Uh, we will end up with one. It's a three and a half incher, and the current Rev 2 of it, or Mark 2, has a little more belly uh, to keep the handle the same and give it just a little more backspacer. This backspacer in this one, can't really see down in there, but that backspacer is really, really thin in this one. Damon, I'm trying to take your money. I'm waiting on these production guys to get the stuff done. <laughs> And uh, this is a valve production prototype, and it is this is a beast. It's a four incher. Uh, the if it goes to production, which we have no idea on this one, it's kind of held up. Uh, there will be some changes from this production prototype, but uh, you know very which one, cool knife. The you know valve. which one I love is um, wait, show me the blade on that one, Zell. Which one, the one you had before that in your hand? I have the... Oh, the oh, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. I absolutely love that blade shape, and I love the one that it, it's it got a uh, more of a drop pointish blade, and it's not a flipper. The one y'all doing in washers, that's a beauty. The one that yeah, Seth I don't, had. Yeah, I don't have one of those up here. And then... We've already looked at this one. We'll look at it again real quick. That is the Master Chief. Uh, we don't have, but it's another one that's in limbo. I will say this. If the deal doesn't go through, we'll probably do a redesign to mark whatever we're at now, five or six. What's uh, up, Oaken? And we'll, uh, we'll end up with one of these in production because this is just a perfect EDC knife size. Uh, Somebody and then, asked of course, about the blade coatings, though. 
the malware. Okay. Uh, yeah, my chat got disconnected. I'm gonna have to. Oh, uh, I'd say. Um, somebody said, "What was that? Which that blade coding coded in?" I guess he's talking about the one in the middle. If it's this one, that's that micro dry slick. Yeah. Now I don't know. Yeah, whoever was tuned in uh, last night on Instagram, we talked about the that stuff he, that Sarah Cody's talking about. It's used for firearms. And I was able to test out uh, their Raptor XL with that same coating on it. And all I can say is, is not all. I mean, I definitely hope that that knife come gets that coating treatment on it. And I would love to see it on more knives. It makes it a phenomenal slicer. Like, yeah, we're talking now. It's going to have to be production somewhere uh, besides. China, if we do that coding, it'll have to be U.S. or European production because I don't think we're going to be able to get Cerakote over there uh, for that kind of stuff, which is okay because we're working on that too, guys. Uh, Four-inch blades. Roxy 4 is a four-inch blade. And the Raptor XL, huh? The Raptor XL, I think, is a little over four inches. Yeah, it's like I think it's four and a quarter, actually. Yeah. The Master Chief is right at a four-inch blade. The Val is a four-inch blade. And the malware is like a three in seven, three point seven something. I don't remember exactly. So all Lady of slicey. them, yeah, all of them are pretty. Have a good night, Slicey. Uh, all of them are kind of big knives, but uh, and I don't have my scale right up here. I'd show you guys. This thing is just over three ounces. Now, it does have the CF on one side, so it'd be about four ounces if you added titanium to the other side of it. But all of them are pretty freaking light for their size. Uh, three and a quarter. We have a two and five A to be the smaller version of this one, the Roxy. Uh, but we do not have anything at 3.25 right now but we are working that way. We've got some stuff that uh, may be coming in that uh, just under three inch and about three and a half inch and maybe something in between. Because as we move along with designs, yeah, guys, we're going to try to hit those, those break points, the just under three inch, the just under three and a half inch. And... And we understand that, you know, Seth and I both generally carry a four inch knife. It's just the way it is for us. So, you know, we're, we are designing smaller though. Like this one's a three and a half. Anyhow, what you got going on over there? Hey, I, uh, real quick, if you don't mind, um, we're talking about how cool our community is. And, um, me and my daughter did a video and she watches YouTube with me, and we, we, you know, that's some stuff we do together. And she, she's an art, she's very art, art, artsy. And she liked my, my bird drawing that I got from Birdshot IV. So she called them out on one of my videos and asked Frankie to draw or something. And she just wants to tell, show y'all and tell her what she told Frankie real quick. Is that, if that's okay with y'all? Yeah, man. Okay, Bring it up. On. Okay, put this in your ear. Okay, oh, come wait, right, look oh, yeah. here. Just you, you can talk. I'll be, I'll better hear it. Okay, okay. Tell them what it is, Belle. Um, it's a unicorn drawing with a knife. Yeah. Okay. And uh, tell everybody why you wanted that. Uh, I um um I don't because know. what are they? Uh, they're your what? Your favorite what? My favorite animal. Yeah, the unicorn's her favorite animal, and of course she wants to be like daddy. And she made Frank. She asked Frankie to draw her a unicorn knife. So I think she nailed it. What y'all think, peeps? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's some awesome stuff there, Bella. Thank well, you. <laughs> She said, "Thank y'all." Mm -hmm. tell, tell everybody. Tell everybody. Uh, you hope to have a great night. Hope you have a great night. You too. <laughs> yeah, you heard her. Okay. Thank you, baby. Okay. Bye. That's that's my angel, everybody. See you later, Bella. She is. 
she's my my reason for for getting up every morning. Heck yeah, yeah, she's a good one. Yes, uh, indeed. And everybody, she needs to watch the comments. Everybody's now, rallying into her side. Uh, everybody's talking to you in the comments. So I'll show it to you later if you want, unless you want to come look at it now. She's coming. Look. All so right. You, you can talk. So I'm gonna share with the comments. All right. And let's see here. What do we got in the comments? We got Rick. Uh, you rock. Uh, Rick. We are trying to make as many different, uh, well, not as many. We're, we're trying to get deals on various different things for various different purposes. And yes, there's going to be several of them. And uh, I, 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 yeah, I'll just be honest. I hope you buy all of them, man. And it's going to be way more than 2K by the time we're done. Hey, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to do it too. I just hope they're spread out enough to where I don't get kicked out of the house right away. Right, right. We're, we're working on that. We are working on release time frames. We do have Best Tech and we are going to be releasing about the same time. But uh, as we roll into next year, we're going to do our best to keep release time frames where we don't have knives piling up on top of each other because I sincerely understand that. I really uh, don't like it whenever two things get released that I want all at the same time and yeah, that's something I would I, I want to touch on too because I don't think some companies understand that they they're hurting themselves way more than they're helping because especially say for instance let's just use use Todd Knife and Tool and you got your Roxy coming out and they drop your Roxy and a month later they drop the the next one or another company drops one of your designs well two things can happen. You know, you either somebody's either having to choose which one they can afford and which one they could buy, you know, instead of let me, I can buy this one now. And by the time the other one comes out, I'll have the money to buy that one. Right. You know, yeah, hang then, on, have a great night keeper. Okay. And then you don't, you don't get a chance to enjoy that one, that first one. And then, like I said, you're, you're, you're on the fence. I really want to buy that first one. You get it, the second one drops, and then you, you just let it go because, you know, they done, they just drop three more. Okay, baby, he knows we're, we're both answering questions back and forth. Damon, yes, we have uh, two designs. One has is headed for production. Uh, if you see the root kit, go to the Todd Knife and Tool Instagram. There's some video of the root kit there. Uh, that one is coming. It is a non-flipper on phosphor bronze. And we also have another one that uh, will end up, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's a smaller <laughs> model that should end up uh, phosphor bronze, no flipper. And uh, it may be a, haven't made a final decision yet, but it may be a fuller open only. It may not have a blade hole in it either. So, I'm good yeah. with that. I, yeah. I like I like me some fullers. Yeah, well, we kind of have a thing for them, especially yeah. when they're done right, you know. Because I'd much rather a, a like you know, uh, either a fuller if it's if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? I'll tell okay. you. Okay, you're fussing about the the buying the knives. So Seth's saying you need to work harder because <laughs> he works. And not just him, the, between the two of us, we're working 80 hours a week, keeping everything rolling to get these knives to you guys. So he's saying that you just need to get a second job. Hey, I don't need, I, don't, I can't, I don't have a job. I, I don't need a second one. Hey, let me just tell you, if I could, I definitely would. But hey, I wasn't speaking about myself. I'm going to buy every one of them. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, I'm just talking about the the people who have have to choose, you know, <laughs> right. I, mean, you know, I have to worry. I'm going to have my collection. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And, and, and Rick, Seth and I are really trying to control the releases. These first two kind of came on us and uh, the Roxy and the malware are probably going to release fairly close to the same time. But once we get past these two, we're going to do our best to control releases. So we don't have uh, two of them coming out within the same couple of weeks. 
So, but that that's also that's a different story, though. I was basically saying within the same company. Whenever it's two different companies, that's kind of that's kind of out of your control in, in in some aspects. So, you know, I understand. I'm I'm just saying, like, say for instance, um, if Kaiser had your model uh, had three year designs in. in you know, they've been working them all at the same time and they drop them all within three, three months, you know, I don't that's know. what we, I'm talking about. We would talk to David and make sure that didn't happen. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and it, it, it whenever it can't be avoided, it can't be avoided. Everybody knows business is business, you know, and that's, you know, if that's just how it, it, it worked out, if that's how they had their machine set up, you know, that's life. But, you know. It's it's always I think it's better for the both the designer and the community when they're spaced out enough. And Willie, I haven't seen that video yet. Uh, that gets back to the I work a regular job forty hours a week, and then I do all this YouTube stuff, and I do a lot of phone and mail, and uh, I don't have. Ask my wife. I don't have any free minutes. Uh, it's all covered up with something to do with either real work or knives. It's just the way it is. And hey, Nick, what is that thing on your desk over there in the very bottom left? That uh, it looks like a blue one. Oh, that's the uh, my heavily, heavily modified Ontario Trinity Carter Trinity. Um, I did that flipper delete because these geniuses had a flipper coming out of this toil right here. So when you went to use that choil, you had a flipper there. Oh, you can actually silly. see it. Look, you see where it was right there? Yeah, pull it down away from the camera just a bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. And what I did was is I deleted that flipper, which is uh, very, very, you got to be very, very careful because as you can see, that's where your stop pin is. Right. So you got to make sure you have enough meat. Then I added this thumb stud to it. I was going to um, put... A uh, blade hole like the his real customs the the BBM or whatever it is. And but, then you figured you'd have to drill hard and steel, and that would be a bum deal. Well, I had to drill it anyway for this thumb stud, and that wasn't really the issue. The issue is they got the detent dialed so much on this knife, and I've even I've even dialed it back some that. Even with the thumb stud, you can't slow roll this. It it's so it, it's so tight in there that it'll flex the titanium. <laughs> oh so wow! You, so you have to either give it a good flick or the spotty flick. Other than that, you know. But after I did all those mods, I love it. Uh, yeah, it looks good. I I have been uh, toying with designing that something that has a, uh, a a profile similar to what that does open. Yeah, I, I think, and now, uh, you know, I bought this because, man, Car Robert Carter, I think it's a Nick Chopper, and I think it was, that did this collab. That design is absolutely beautiful. And I, I, I was so excited when I heard about this one coming out that, you know, I, I don't know if I pre-ordered or not, but, it's just it's all it's nice lightweight but of course leave it up to leave it up to them to screw it up i mean not only did they do that you know they we know they have access to d2 with the r2d2 and the rat one and d2 and right. the, and all the other ones the carter prime and then they did both of the other carter knives and d2 and then you get this cool design and they go to all eight right you know, i don't you know i guess yeah. you know it's a stainless, but why not just stick with what you already have? And then, then you got, you know, this tie frame lock and you got this looks like tie clip. No, it's a stainless clip. That's the Carter Prime, Ishar. It's the Car yeah, Carter Trinity. It's or Carter the, the, Trinity, the, right. The Prime was that first one they did. Right. And Rick, here's the deal on all those four inch knives. Uh, they will get an initial run whenever they go, and if they sell out, they'll get more runs. If they don't, well, it's it's just the way the market works, man. Uh, so I can't guarantee additional runs, but uh, 
I would guess that uh, the Roxy, the small one, the Roxy 4, and the malware will get additional runs. Uh, and we'll just have to see from there on any of the other ones. Thanks, Damon. He said, my, my edges look so nice. Yeah, uh, they do. Well, you got time to do that now. I don't have time to do those anymore. Well, uh, shame on me because, you know, since I, I got my, my, my new system, I've probably sharpened maybe five, six knives. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's, it's mainly, it's not because, it's mainly because uh, it's hard for me to sit in that type of position for more than 15 minutes at a time. So it's like a, a, an hour long sharpening job ends up taking me four hours, you know? So I yeah. Know. And I, you know, I just, I just don't have time to do it anymore. The, uh, the sharp maker is my friend anymore. Uh, yes, okay. Damon, they, they will not all be produced by we, uh, we are spreading the designs out over a handful of companies which I think is great. Uh, we're even considering some U.S. production. So, uh, no, they will not all be Wii knives. And Oaken. Okay. And, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and if everything works out the way that uh, we've been talking here recently, we're probably going to have knives in the future from around just under 100 bucks all the way up through 300 or so. So, uh, so we're trying to cover some, a fairly wide price point and, you know, and some various manufacturers. And what is that thing you've got there, man? This right here? Yeah. It's a Spyderco of some sort. Yeah. This is the Spyderco Leaf Storm. It was produced uh, a while back and it just, it's a, it's a Wilkins design. The same person who did, does like the Wilkin grip. Wilkins grips and stuff like that and uh, he was basically a designer a graphic designer who decided to start designing knives and I bought one of these when whenever they had first came out and at that time I was into more you know beefy bigger knives so I didn't keep it long at all and about a year later, I regretted it, and then they discontinued it, and the search was on. It literally took me – I searched probably for three years looking for this knife, and not because I couldn't find it, but you would either be able to find it, and it was destroyed to hell and back, mm -hmm. or you find a good one, and they were trying to bend you over so bad on the price – so finally, a buddy of mine on Instagram that I had done many transactions with said, hey, he said, I, kn I, I know you've been looking for this knife for, for years now. He said, I'm finally ready to get rid of mine. And I was like, man, I, I'm just going to tell you, I can't afford no two, three hundred dollars for the knife. And I'm not going to say the price, but I definitely couldn't pass it up. And I'm definitely glad to have it back in the collection. Well, that is cool. Glad you got one. Uh Definitely an interesting design to be a spider co. Yeah, and and that was the thing. I think uh, Wilkins had total total free reign on this guy. It's just a lot of things different. Like look how they have this lanyard set up. You see that? Yeah. And you also have this integral, just like a Strider integral um, G10 right. right here. Right. And another thing is look look out like like squared off like the frame like the the uh, a lot of people when this first came out talked about that see how it's like so yeah uh, you got that thin piece of titanium with the thick and i don't know it's all those little things that actually draw me to the knife i mean it's not the most ergonomic knife because i mean as you can see you really only have this little section to put your fingers that's why i have a lanyard on this guy to put my, my finger in there and you can kind of choke up but it's not comfortable because that's so wide but it's just that, you know, different, you know, kind of like uh, I'm sure this guy will be, you know, in five, five more years, ten more years, whenever they're really hard to find. And Zell, that knife you got your finger on, I, I want to buy that when you're done with it. The dog tooth? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll make a deal on that at some point. I need to actually do a video on it. Yeah, and I said just whenever, whenever you get tired of it. Because, you know, we talked about it some. I'll show the guys what we're talking about here. This uh, Zinker Dog Tooth. Uh, and some of you guys have heard this over and over again by now, but this, without buying a custom, is probably the best built production Zinker out there. Oh, yeah. I, we talked about that, huh? Whenever I was at Blade looking at the actual Proto and, the, and that, how close it was. Mm-hmm. It didn't have it didn't have any of the markings on it, and he was like, "Tell me which one's the custom, which one's the production," and I was like, "Man, I don't want to sound rude, but I I can't." He's like, "No," he said, "That that's how good they did." <laughs> yeah. So, and like I've said several times now, the big difference between this and a zinker is, from Brad is they didn't chamfer the, all the holes and anodize them a different color or polish them. And that's kind of a downer, but at the price point, if you like the Zinker designs, it's it's hard to argue with this. And it's another one of those compound grinds that it just cuts. It's not it's for looks, and it doesn't really mess anything up. So, and it's got for you guys that like the deep carry pocket clips, really deep carry carry pocket clip. Yeah, uh, Damon. Yeah, that's one knife that is is definitely in the stretch definitely an ugly knife well in my opinion ugly knife but ergos and performance that the performance i've had three stretches and man talk about a good worker have you ever had one zell you know i have looked over the years many times at a stretch and i've never bought one and I, well, I don't know why. I, I when the Hat Forty was out, I thought about it. I, I thought about getting a, a ZDP one eighty nine one, and I've just never pulled the trigger on one. Yeah, it, I'll be honest. Like I said, I had the Hat Forty one, and I've had a ZDP, and I've had the VG ten one. And if I had to choose, it would be the ZDP one all day, every day. Oh, yeah, I like ZDP-189. I know it has its drawbacks, but I still like that steel a lot. I'll tell you, though, Spyderco does a really good job. I, I, I didn't notice it to be chippy at all. Right. Because I know some companies, you know, Rockwell it really, really high, and then it tends to chip. But they erred on the side of caution, and it, it performs really well. Super blue yeah. stretch. Yeah, I never was really into the Super Blue. Uh, I had a Super Blue Delica back in the – I mean, not a Delica, Cali 3 way back in the day. And I don't know – don't get me wrong, it, it's a good steal and it takes a stupid sharp edge, but I'm not a huge patina guy on my blades on some in some knives. And, of course, you know, that one patina is quick. It's nice. Yeah. I have one – light blue f or in yeah that that's the uh that the one that's hard to find huh the the zd he's talking about the stretch and uh that light blue f or in that was like uh i think it was a sprint color now they you yeah. can't get the british green british racing green dog tooth again yeah we can hit the dog tooth up again and there we go that is the dog tooth and i think we're going to take a a uh, moment here, and we're going to go through a couple of the prize packs for yeah, the that's giveaway. What was, that's what now, I don't, I'm, I'm itching don't, for it. Yeah. Don't get too too terribly excited yet, because we've got to get some stuff in the air, get things, some stuff down to Staza and some stuff up here to me. And as soon as we've got that done, then we will unleash the giveaway on everybody. So, uh, hey. So, we're talking Final. about probably another week or so, but uh, yeah, go ahead, Staza. We're just going to give you all a small little taste. We're going to give you uh, our the prize package four and our prize package six. Is that okay with you, Zell? That sounds good to me. You want to go ahead and read one off? Yeah, and I and I want y'all to know this is we have six prize packages, and this is prize number four. Think about that as I'm reading it, and prize number six. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read the prize package number four. And the main thing that both Zell and I were trying to accomplish is we wanted to make the packages um, 
full of, of, of some of our favorite gear to use. Nothing in these packages are, is going to be stuff that we wouldn't recommend. You know, and I mean, some of it is, uh, you know, uh, well, I'll get to it in a second. But just know that that's why it took us so, uh, so one of the reasons, because we wanted everything to be stuff that we would recommend. So the first thing in prize package four. <laughs> what? Watch is, servers crash when it actually happens. <laughs> yeah. Prize package four. The number first thing is the Best Tech BT seventeen ten A, and that is the Imp. That's a titanium frame lock version with the carbon fiber on the show side. Very cool little knife. And um, that one uh, is, was, was sponsored by We. Uh, we got you. I mean, I'm sorry, Best Tech. And the next next thing in that package is a We hat, uh, sponsored by We. Um, from there, we got we got you a flashlight, uh, uh, the Olight i3e, which is a cool little. I mean, everybody knows Olight makes nothing but quality products. <laughs> then we got uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works to to give us a little sponsor with a swag swag bag which was super cool of them. And we sponsored us with, for all y'all lanyard lovers, we got a lanyard in each package. And the 400-pound gorilla hooked us up with uh, some custom hanks that y'all you will have in there, a hank. And then our awesome friends at Scout Leather Company hooked y'all up with a valet tray. Very cool. Their products, their leather goods are so, 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 so nice. Yeah, and those little valet trays are so cool. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Weha, we got a, a, a Torx Precision set. Um, I think it goes from a T6 to a T15. And um, the knife pivot lube also in that prize package and last but certainly not least a uh, custom tie pry bar that if you've watched my channel before you know what i'm talking about it's the little guy that i made myself and it's a it's a pry bar with a bottle opener and it's been anodized by me as well so that's 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 just that's one prize package peeps and that's the number four and zell's gonna tell you about prize package number six all right, prize package number six starts out starts out with a Benchmade full-size Griptilian. That is from Benchmade and Jim's Firearms. And from Wii, we've got a Wii hat. From Olight, we've got an Olight 1R EOS. I believe that is the small little light that uh, is rechargeable. Yes. And we have, of course, a Smoky Mountain Knife Works swag bag. And Wee's also throwing in a lanyard. And from Leong Ma, we have a Xeno bit. And that is not the little pry bar thing. Leong didn't just hand us a, got yeah. some of the, the cheap stuff. It's the little neck knife from uh, Leong Ma. It's a big old piece of S35VN with a little, I think it's like an inch and a half blade on it. <laughs> yeah, so like I'll, I'll just say, and peeps, after I saw it, I'm going to go out and buy myself one. That's just how, that's how cool it is. <laughs> and let's see from there, of course we have Hanks from the 400 pound gorilla and DAS offense, mirror Off gun deck. That's the wallet, right? Stazza? Yes. Uh, it's the, his gun deck wallet on that prize package. So we got the gun deck wallet. And for all you guys that want scout leather company drivers, there's going to be a scout kit leather company driver and a regular size bit set in uh, that prize package, a bottle of uh, knife pivot lube and see, I've got some knife pivot lube right here. Those guys were kind enough to sponsor us. And if I can get the light on them, right, I made a couple of little keychain pry bars too. I Super didn't get all cool. fancy and put a bottle opener on it, but yeah, but look, what, show them what the material is too. Yeah, but they are uh, redneck skin Damascus from Alabama, Damascus, and uh, that's 
that is, uh, I say that's it, but that is, I'm not even sure what that prize package is worth. Whoa. But those are two of the mid and low tier prize packages. And of course, the two upper prize packages both have a sharpening system in them and other things. So that's just kind of a sneak peek as to what the prize packages would be. Uh, yeah, it's something I, I and after after seeing that, I mean, tell me, y'all give us what y'all what y'all think. I mean, is, is that what we think? We think they're full of of quality products, and you know, we we're we're happy to be sponsored by you know all these companies. But we would definitely like to hear y'all feedback. I mean, w w would you be excited to win either one of those? And like I said, and Zelrick said. Those are nowhere near our first and second prizes. Those are our middle and our last place prize. So definitely, yeah. definitely cool. Definitely. And let's see. This is, it is one of ours. And uh, it, it won't be long before we uh, we have the uh, how to enter and everything and, and the videos up on the channel. We got to just, we'll just say this. Um, it, it took us a while for several reasons. We, we had to, to wait. You know, when you're getting sponsored items for your channel, you don't call the shots and that's kind of rude. So, you know, you kind of, when they get them to you, they get them to you. So that was one of the factors. And, you know, we both have normal everyday lives. Zelrick, he's juggling tons of things, uh, you know, work, knife making, social media, you name it. He's got his hand in it. And then to top it off, this past week I had surgery, so I was out for a whole week not to be able to do anything on it. So we appreciate every one of y'all being super patient with us. And Zell, you got anything else to add on that? No, I'm just, uh, yeah, the, the getting everything together. One, I want to thank all of the people that are going to sponsor this giveaway, all the companies, because it has been an outpouring of just unbelievable graciousness from these companies, making, not just putting stuff in a box and sending it, but uh, before I even get a chance to email them back or call them back and say that they got stuff, they're on the phone wanting to make, not being mean about things, wanting to make sure that everything showed up and everything was good and the box wasn't damaged or any of that sort of thing. And these guys, the, the people that are running the companies in this knife community are just as cool as the people. You know, yeah. I had... We did have a hard time getting a hold of Wicked Edge, but whenever I got out to Blade Show West and got to talk to the owner, whose name is not popping up in my head right now. Clay Allison. Clay. Got to talk to Clay and Ross and told them what we were doing. Clay's like, yeah, man, we want in on that. And it's been that way with everybody. Whenever we could talk to them in person or a direct email, they've just been, you know, yeah, we want to support you guys and what you're doing. And it's just uh, the community is super awesome. And whoever said something about this ender, yeah, I th this, you know, the warthog, this thing. Damn it! Uh, I, I was kind of questioning buying a Gen Six ender, but uh, it still has the minor hinder issues that all hinder all XM eighteens and twenty fours have. But I have carried it a lot. And if you're looking for a work knife or a hard use knife, it's hard to beat one of these things. Uh, this isn't some knife to buy and stick in the freaking safe. Not by any means. No. This is one to buy it and use the crap out of it because yep. that's what they're built for. And uh, Rick has got the machining and the tolerances down so tight that he's making great knives. Uh, the last one I had was a Gen 4, and it was a good knife, but it can't compare to this Gen 6. And yes, somebody's going to say it. I will eventually do a video about putting it on phosphor bronze washers. I'm just putting it off because it works so great on bearings. Uh, 
and I can I can say that too. This uh, what is this one called, Zell? That I have it's the half track. Yeah, the half yeah. track. I I have to I have to say you know this isn't this isn't in his uh, tryway yet, but you know Rick said that all of his models will will you know as he makes new ver- new um, batches of all of his models, they're going to have the tryway pivot. So right. that's cool to hear. But this guy right here. You know, the one one reason why I decided to pick it up is because it doesn't have that that um, the nasty hook. the nasty no not well that no, too it doesn't have that jumping back here in the back uh, uh, behind the flipper tab and after handling this at Blade Show I was I was very impressed comfortable in hand the ergos work good I mean Rick Rick knows how to nail his ergos I mean the three and a half inch ergos are just mind blowing and he's got this one's on Teflon but the detent is perfection look this watch this action I mean it has a such a thwack you can light switch it and I mean it of course that push button is is the best but even even at a light switch right here it rockets out as well yeah I need to get my hands on that one a little bit because I'm just impressed and Rick we really appreciate that and I have the stainless working finish warthog pin from uh DLT trading uh, that's yeah, the I one I have, one and I don't have it up here on the desk right now. It's in the little valet tray put away at the moment because I had uh, – let me get the camera swapped out here – because I had the bolt-action pin from Wii. And I'm going to say this again for all you bolt-action pin guys. Uh, Wii selling these things for mid-60s. Yeah, that, uh, uh, that that's, that's stupid cheap, especially – because I have worked at a machine shop and I see all that milling on there, I don't I don't know how they do it. I really don't. Uh, I don't know mind either. Bo- mind boggling. I know at Blade Show West, whenever I saw that we were going to put them out, uh, I went over there and I grabbed two of them for me and Seth, and I'm, I was glad that I did because Blade Show opened at I forget what ten that morning on Friday, and by noon, probably by eleven. Every one of the bolt action pins was gone. Uh, they, they've got a good action on them. Works good, easy to manipulate. They put a pretty good cartridge in them. Uh, it's not my favorite. It's a thick cartridge. Got a not a fine point, but uh, it writes well. But uh, that's why I don't have the hinderer see. pin. Da- Damon uh, asked. What degree I sharpen this half track on? Because yeah, it does have a fat bevel on there, and if I remember correctly, I, it's it's either it's either seventeen and a half or eighteen degrees per side. Um, and I did it purposely. I knew it was gonna it was gonna make it a pretty fat bevel, but this is a user for me, and. I wanted it to perform just a little bit better because, you know, it's got this saber grind on here and it's fairly thick behind the edge because it's, it's a stout little knife, but it still performs well. I mean, this, I did a, I did a video showing some of my actual test testing that I do on pretty much every knife I review and it did great. I mean, the only thing that, you know, it kind of struggled with and it's just, you know, it's the nature of the beast when you get a thicker blade stock like that is um, thick, uh, I think it was some thick rubber that, you know, gives a lot of knives trouble and, you know, once it it started bonding up in this area, but, you know, with, with a stupid sharp edge on there and pretty much all cardboard's not going to matter except like your three ply movie bo- uh movie I mean TV uh box stuff but great little knife it would, I would have loved to have this guy in 20 CV like he's doing in in the in his runs right now I mean this is uh S35 VN which Nothing is wrong uh, with that Yeah I was about to say it's, it's a great steal I just you know I got so many knives with S35 VN I just I like to switch it up sometimes but I'll take S35 VN over S30. I just I, I rather the way it uh, sharpens a lot lot better. Right, and we appreciate it, Dylan and Buddy. Uh, whenever you're talking about the knives, 
Uh, I, I'm not going to comment too much on design unless I see something that is just way out there bad and you, you know, something that you must have missed. But uh, whenever it comes to the technical aspects, uh, myself, Seth, Nick, or Staza, we, we're here to help whenever we can. That's for sure. Yeah, we do. We, we all, we both do, you know, we do stealth reviews too. You know, I, I, that's one thing. I I don't I like sometimes depending on if I don't if I've never never handled a company's knife I'm much rather when they approach me to do a stealth review because I don't ever I'm not ever trying to hurt somebody's livelihood in the community that's never my intention but at the same time I'm not gonna lie about anything so um, you know what do you what do you think about that Zell we me and you've had many of conversations about this. You know, I do the same thing. Now, I do things a little different than you do. Uh, I and, and especially now that I have designs coming out, you know, that, that have my name on them. Uh, I really, I do overviews. And what I've started doing since is what would Zell do different at the end of it? Yeah, uh, that's, I do that a little bit. That's kind of what I do at my end of mine. And it's because, you know, here's the thing. I can fuss about all kinds of things on all kinds of knives, but a lot of it's opinion. Like here, this is a $550 knife, and I can fuss about the size. Uh, why is the toil so big, or why isn't it bigger on this knife? But the bottom line is, whenever it was designed, whenever Derek designed this thing, that's the way he wanted it. Yeah. And that was his vision. Yeah, his vision, and I could fuss about it. I could fuss about the fact that I can cut myself on that right there. And by the same token, whenever people, uh, that's not a good example, but this one is a good example. Whenever people pick up the Roxy, there's going to be a bunch of reviewers just throw fits about the edge termination on the Roxy. And that's fine. They can throw the fits because whenever Seth and I talked these out, we decided, and actually ours are square if you look at the We've got a Spyderco-esque Ricasso area. That's hard to see in the black. Yeah. But a Spyderco-esque Ricasso area whenever we do the handmade versions. But we do that for a reason. We do that so that whenever you stick this knife in a box, uh, Amazon box or whatever, and go to cut down through it, you don't have a choil there cooking that box and making it hard to get out. Yeah. And that's... And, uh, and there are some more tactical reasons for that, too, that we probably don't need to be talking about on YouTube. But you guys <laughs> can imagine if it gets caught in a box, other places it's going to get caught. Yeah. Hey, uh, Rick asked, uh, if I don't win anything, how much do each of your pro well, how much how much do each of your pride bars for? And I, I can't answer for Zell, but I'm just going to be honest. Um uh, I, I'm not making them to sell because uh, let's be honest, especially unless I did some out of 1095 or something like that. Titanium is just such a bitch to work with when it comes to just my, 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 my one by 30 grinder and my limited tools I have. So I do those as a project to do. Uh, and it wouldn't be, it, it it would make sense for you to buy one because I would have to charge way too much if I charge for the time I put into it. So, what, I mean, wouldn't you say, Zell, on, on a tie, titanium thing, if you're not getting it water jetted? Uh, you know, there may be a time where I have some available. But I here's the way I do things, Rick. And I, I know it's not what people want to hear, but... I tried the list thing. I tried the book thing. And with doing all the production stuff and doing all these other things, that stuff doesn't work because I feel like I get way behind and then I feel rushed and then I make mistakes and then I waste materials. And so it's kind of like this. If I do something, I'll throw it out there on Instagram. And if somebody wants it, they want it uh, because I just can't be doing the book thing or the list thing because it puts 
it puts way too much stress on me and I feel like I'm not doing well for the customer and that that's even worse. And I don't make a bunch of them. You yeah. know, these were just an evening. Uh, Staza had said that he was going to put a couple of his custom pry bars in these giveaways. And I was like, well, I've got some Damascus scraps. So I'm going to run out to the shop and make a couple of pry bars. Yeah. And, and, but I, and something I'll say too, Rick, at the same token, and I'm sure Zell would do the same too. If, if I if I if I make one, and it's it wasn't spoken for before you commented like you did, I'll definitely reach out to you and say, "Hey, man, I got one. If you want to, if you want to buy it, you know." Right, right. I would do that too. I'm just not going to be put put under pressure with all the other stuff I have going on. Yeah, because then then it, it takes the passion out of it too. I find. Yeah, and that's what it did. Whenever I did that run of these, uh, the shivers, I would love to make more of these. And I've got some that I've made that have got some nice handle materials, and I've got some nice handle materials to put on them. But whenever I started making those and had a list and all that stuff, man, it just ended up stress. And, yeah. And I didn't care for it. And I, then I ended up with some problems with the uh, steel and then I didn't get some of the, uh, it was just a big mess. And we yeah. appreciate that, Rick. We do try to do our best. Yeah, to, uh, I, I, that's something I, I was going to comment and finish what you're saying. And then I, I want to comment on that too. Uh, I try to do, well, I do. If I can't say something truthful about a knife whenever I put it up on the table and I, or I feel like I'm going to have to be ugly about it. Uh, most of the time I just don't do the video because I don't, you know, before I, I'll reach out to the maker, I'll reach out to the company or whatever. But, uh, if I can't come to a resolution doing that, sometimes I will just shelve it. I've got probably 20 or 30 knives over there that I have let other reviewers do all the whining and moaning about. And uh, I'm just not going to do it because I don't want to be that ugly about things. And I don't want to uh, not tell the truth because I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I feel, you know, like the Skaha review I did. People got kind of up in arms about that. Some guy messaged the Skaha people. Well, all right. The Skaha <laughs> people pretty much knew what was coming. So it was okay. Uh, and I just told you the truth. Upset a lot of people. Other people liked it. You know, whatever. Uh, I and and that's how I try to run things. And I think Nick or Staz is pretty close on doing that too. Yeah, this is this is what I wanted to touch on. And uh, first off, you know, if something comes out and I'm, it, it's not correct, it's not because I'm ever trying to lie to somebody. I just might have made a mistake. I'm human, but. I don't, I don't have anything to gain from lying to y'all or, you know, I, I'm just trying to share my knowledge and share my experience on how the knife is for me. I don't, my videos aren't monetized, so I'm not making any money off of it. And, you know, I don't have companies left and right sending me knives, you know, so pretty much, you know, 90, 98% of all my, my knives and gears paid for out of my pocket, just like Zell too. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I look at it like this. If I give you my opinions on the knife and, and you're, you like a lot of the same stuff that I like, I don't want to do you a disservice by you going to get that knife and it's total crap or, you know, vice versa. Uh, I want, I really, I really want people to, to experience what I am experiencing just like i did that knife pivot lube i didn't get paid by that company but the product is a good product for what you're paying for you know is it the best in the world that everything no it's not but it's a good product it's a good price point especially compared to the nano oil you know i, I and i love whenever you get like a product like this from a small maker trying to provide for his family and it's a cool product you know i, I told you things i like and i don't like and I think, I don't know if this is me and you, Zell, that were talking about this, and, and it's something that I had, I really 
am trying to do lately is I find the worst thing as a reviewer that you could possibly do is when you, if you get a knife and there's something that, you know, like for instance, just, just use this, the clip on this knife, you know, you get it from a dealer and you have strong emotions about that. I, was that me and you talking about the cell? Instead yeah. of doing the video when you're upset about that knife, just sleep on it and wait till the next day because you don't want emotions coming out over, you know, what what should have been said. You know, like say, yeah, the clip on this knife may, you know, may need to be changed if if that's something that really bugs you like it does me. But it's not hurting the functionality of the knife. It still sits well in the pocket, you know. When I, right. if I'm upset, then I would be like, "Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous, terrible. Don't buy it," you know. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I also do a little bit of a split thing. You know, if if I'm talking about, uh, say, one of a, let me get the camera back over here, one of Elijah's designs. Uh, I'm going to try to give you the best I can tell you about Elijah's design. And I'm also going to tell you that this is probably not the best everyday carry knife. It's knife. It's an art piece, and it's a heck of a nice art piece. But whenever I go and let's see, what do I got up here? That's uh, if Spiderco is the number one company, I don't think I have it. Believe it or not, I do not have a Spiderco on the. Yeah, I do. I am going to tell you all day wrong. What's all day long? What's wrong, wrong with the? <laughs> uh, yeah, all, yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's wrong with the inside of this knife? Why? Because Spider Co. is a big enough company. They should know better. Yep. And and, and sometimes they, they listen, you know? You know, I, I would be more likely with, say, Elijah to, if I saw something glaringly wrong, I'd be more likely to call him up and say, hey, dude, why'd you do this? Yeah. And, uh, but Spider Co., I, I can't exactly call Sal or Eric and say, "Hey, man, why'd you do that?" Yeah, that that like I and I, I tell you, it's one. That's one. Ever since Zell and I became friends, I and he, we both do it to each other. Try to balance it, like in in anybody else who does YouTube. You know, if you ever have this, something doesn't feel right. Usually, it's good for me to ask Zell his opinion, just because it'll sometimes help me think outside of the box or it'll give me a different perspective, which, you know, sometimes is, is like, Oh, you know, I didn't think about it like that. And that's, that's definitely right. So absolutely. It, it's good to, to discuss, you know, things with not just one person. I, that's something whenever I hear a lot of people, you know, you find this one reviewer and that's all you ever pay attention to, but uh, it's not smart, you know? Well, yeah, and, and you have to realize, uh, you know, there's different reviewers with different ideas, uh, and that is a danger. That is a major danger that uh, we have in the industry. We can't have one reviewer or a couple of reviewers controlling the industry and what they're doing, and you got to be careful about that because you've got to watch the companies. They listen. They yeah. are listening to what we're saying, and they are making decisions on these knives. So, according to <laughs> the popular vote, <laughs> right? So, if you have one guy out there in the that's making a lot of noise, and he's got a lot of people agreeing with him, you may come up with some of the stupidest crap ever on a knife just because of that one guy. Yep. And I try to think about that whenever I do these reviews because I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You see it you see it transcending into the next design they make and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean I didn't you know, if it's a change like that. For, yeah, if it's a change for good, awesome. But if it's not, ooh. Yeah. Oh uh, uh well Zell. I, I I'm not I'm not st feeling too hot right now. All of a sudden, I started getting real stuffy, and my knees are hurt really bad. So right, I'm man. probably gonna have to bow out. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to 
I want to thank everybody, everybody who's in this group, because I see a lot of uh, familiar faces in here, see some new people. We really, we love, we love hanging out with y'all guys. And uh, I think it's mostly guys, but you know, we, we really, we enjoy these and uh, we appreciate all y'all support. And thanks, thanks, thanks to everybody for being patient. We, we really appreciate, appreciate that as well. And one of these days, guys, whenever I put one of those things out on Instagram, where it says we're going to be on at 2200 or 10 p.m., <laughs> we're actually going to make it. Sometime. We try. We try. I think, I think everybody understands. Everybody, uh, everybody uh, you know, has stuff that comes up, and we're, we're, we're humans. We're not robots. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But so. we really do appreciate everybody that shows up. It is so cool to be able to hang out with you guys, watch the chat, talk with everybody. And uh, just so you know, as we get better at this, we are going to bring in uh, some other people whenever we get the opportunity. I've talked with some of the PR reps from some of the knife companies, and there are a few of them already kind of waiting uh, for us to get to that point to bring them in on some of these late knife uh, discussions. Yeah. So that is coming in the future, and we better get out of here, guys. Uh, uh, Staz, I can get to hey, feeling Bell. better. Hold on, Bella wants to tell everybody everybody good night. Come on, baby. All right. Hold on. Cool. Hold on. Bye. Wait, no, look right here, baby. Look. Baby. Bye. And say good night. Good night, Bella. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Yeah, everybody have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to click the bell so that you can catch us whenever we actually do get to go live. And we'll be back soon, guys. <laughs>